what you see is what we're going to paint. So why don't you stay with me? And as well as that, I'll show you one of the wonders of the world. Simply Painting is underwritten by Windsor & Newton, makers of Cotman watercolors and paintbrushes, manufacturers of fine art materials since 1832. Welcome everyone to Simply Painting. I'm Frank Clark and I'm sitting on one of the wonders of the world. It's the Giant's Causeway on the Antrim coast in Ireland. Now there's a story about how this was formed. Let me tell you. There was a local giant. He was a warrior and he lived around here and he decided that he wanted to have a battle with the Scottish counterpart. So he built this roadway or causeway across to Scotland. Now when he got there, he saw the size of the Scottish giant, he decided he's a bit big. So he came home, told his wife, and she being an Irish woman of course, said to him, well, why don't you get into bed, we'll make up a cradle, I'll put a bonnet on you, you look like a baby, and when the giant comes across, I'll tell him that you're only the, the baby. That's exactly what happened, the Scottish giant came across. When he saw the size of Finn McCool as a baby, he thought, well, if this is the baby, I don't want to meet the father. So he raced back across the causeway. As he did, he broke it so he couldn't be followed. That's the first story. You can believe that if you wish. The other one is that it was formed about 50 million years ago here by volcanic action. Anyway, we're here to paint. And I picked a scene earlier, which is on the Antrim coast, and that's what we're going to do. So you and I are going to head back to my studio now, and we're going to paint a pretty picture. Hello there. Well, I hope you enjoyed the Giant's Causeway, the wonder of the world. Wasn't it fantastic? I'll tell you more about it a little later on. Let's look at the picture we painted. And as a matter of fact, this is the next beach to it. It's just beside it. The Giant's Causeway is over there. This is the next little inlet. And I thought it would make a nice picture. So why don't you join me over at the desk? Let's get comfortable and let's get at it. So we sit ourselves down here and we get our... Oh, that's great, isn't it? Nice to get sitting down to chat to you. Yes. Well, now, let's talk about the picture. But before we do, what do we talk about? Let's talk about the materials we're going to need. And this time, We've cut down on the number of paints. We've only got six. We've got white, we've got burnt umber, we've got raw sienna, we've got lemon yellow, pale hue, we've got ultramarine, and we've got vermilion hue, because somebody said they'd like me to try that one out this time. I may not use it, I may. Anyway, there it is. Next, we have the palette. That's to put the paints out on. It's a piece of plastic, and there's a hole here. That's because if you want to hold it up like that, if you had an easel, you see, you could paint with it in your hand. We're going to leave it flat. Next we have the brushes, and there are three of them. There's the large, simply painting, and this is made of bristle brush. Make sure when you're asking for it, it's a bristle, acrylic brush. That's the first one, it's two inches broad, and that's the one we're going to do most of the painting with. Next we have the middle size brush, which is a number four filbert, and that means there's a round top on it. That's the second one, that's also made of bristle. Third brush is, it's a rigger. It's a number three rigger. It's made from nylon, and that's the brush we do the detail work with. But not too much, as you know. Big brush most of the time. Next, we have uh, some pads here to dry the brushes on. We've got some water, because, of course, you mix acrylic with water. That's the medium, very handy. And last, we have this canvas panel. And the canvas panel measures 14 by 10, 14 inches long by 10 inches high. That means we're going to paint it in landscape, isn't it? Because it's longwise. Right, I've got another board behind it, as you can see. That's so as I don't dirty my table. So it's an old board I found. I stick it onto it, and then I can paint. I can let the paint go off the side like that, and I don't do any damage to the table. It's a good idea for you, a little trick. Yes. Right, let's now talk about how we're going to paint this picture, and we'll have a look at it at the same time. Well, this is a real have simply painting picture, I can tell you. Have some more fun job. 
horizon, sky, middle and foreground. It's very obvious the horizon is the horizon of the sea, the sky is on top, the foreground is down the very bottom and the middle ground is where the, those little yachts are. That's the way we're going to do it, so it's have some more fun. Right, off we go. First thing we do, let's put out some paint to do the horizon line. And this time we put out some blue paint to draw in our horizon and it's a good idea because after all this, the sea is blue, isn't it? Yeah, so we're there. Now, normally we don't really care where, we, we care where we put the horizon, but we don't care whether it's all that straight or not with the critics, because we can straighten it up later. This time I'm going to be a little bit more careful. Do you know why? Because I'm doing a seascape, and we cannot have the sea looking like it's like a windscreen wiper. It's got to be fairly straight. It's fairly high. It's about there. So it's about, look, across like that. Now, I hope that's straight. That's pretty good, isn't it? Look, back and forth a few times. If you have a ruler, use it. I just lost mine. I don't know where it is. I think there's somebody working in the house. They pinched it. They did. Some carpenter. That's that builder, Stephen, again. You know the fellow who, who did the walls here for me? Wait till I get him. I'd kill him. Imagine putting walls like that in your studio. And they were lovely brick walls. However, there we are. We've got the horizon line. Never mind him. We'll deal with him later. Next comes the sky. And we need two more colours. We need raw sienna. And let's put a big dollop of that out. And the next thing we need is white. And don't be mean with these colours. Honestly, these are big tubes. You can get loads of pictures out of them. So for goodness sake, don't be afraid to use the paint. Put it out. Honestly, we, we artists can be very mean people, honestly. And very generous at the same time. Anyway, let's look at it now. We're going to get some of the raw sienna and the white. Mix the two together. We've got a kind of a yellowy colour. And we're going to put that on the sky first. That'll give us a kind of a... A kind of a creamy background to the sky, so you don't want it just plain blue. If you want it plain blue, you can put it that way, I don't mind. But Now, I hope you've all got your brushes and your paints, and you, you've realised now that anybody can paint, and that you're ready there, like greyhounds in the trap, ready to get at this thing with me, because there's not much use of me spending lesson after lesson here telling you how to paint and giving you all the secrets, all the secrets, and you're not using them. So I expect a rush to the art shop for those of you who just joined us for the first time. You may have just turned on your television and realised, oh, it's a funny Irishman on the thing. And he's painting. Maybe we should try this. Just watch it. You'll be surprised. I've never known a failure. Now, what I'm doing is I'm putting in where I think the sky is and leaving out where I think the clouds are. Do you understand that? It's the reverse to what you think. Now, they're on the bottom of this. Look at that. I'll give it a good... Give the brush a good swish around. The beauty of acrylic paint is you don't need a whole bunch of brushes because, of course, you can clean them so quickly. Yeah, I'm just putting a bit of white there at the, on the horizon line because I want to give it a nice bit of, maybe a little bit there. Now, when that's all done, I'm going to just run that brush ever so carefully across. Watch this. Lean it on the top and just, it's only absolutely resting on it. And what that does is it kind of softens the paint. See that? And we've got a reasonable looking sky there now, haven't we? Now, it does not have to be exactly the same as the sky we're painting from. In fact, you try and paint a sky even out of doors. By the time you look up, it's gone, and then you, you be, it's a, one minute it's a storm, and the next minute it's not. Anyway, there it is. So why don't we give this a little dry, because I want to put a little island into this. So let's give it a tiny dry with the old hair dryer. Ah, it's plenty now. Just a quick one. I don't want to dry it too much, just to get the, the gloss off it. Now, the next move is I'm going to put in, if you look back to the picture very quickly, you'll see in the middle, almost, of it, there's a, a, a mass of land. That is not a... No well, it is an island, of course. It's Scotland. So I suppose you'd call the, the whole of England is an island. Ireland, England, so England, Scotland and Wales is all one big island. But, and it's also it's quite a well-known place. That is the Mull of Kintyre. Now, what is famous about the Mull of Kintyre? Well, let me tell you. You ever hear of a guy called John Lennon of the Beatles? Hmm. Well, he lived there for a while. I'm told that he sold his farm or he's moved or something, but uh, not John Lennon. I'm wrong. It was Paul McCartney. Yes, just before the phone starts to hop off the hook. It was not... It was not... Oh, it was, that's who it was. Paul McCartney. He lived there for a while. And it's a beautiful place. Now, look, it's a faint. I don't want this in too strong. This is about... 20 miles away. You can see quite a lot of the uh, Scottish coastline from the north coast of Ireland. 
the joints. This is right up in the very top of of Ireland. Now look at that. That's pretty far away, isn't it? We don't want to make it. Don't make it too too bright. Look silly. Now, that's that in. Let's have a quick look back to the picture again and see how we're getting on. Well, we have. We've got our sky, which is we've got our horizon. Now the next thing, I suppose, is the sea. Let's get at it. For those of you who haven't painted before and who think it's impossible, and let me tell you some, some just to give you a little story. There was a. Did you ever hear of Henry Matisse? He was one of the impressionists, like a post-impressionist, very wonderful painter. And uh, believe it or not, he started to paint when he was in having an operation in hospital. He had just he was recovering from it. And somebody decided, ah, oh, the poor fellow, let's give him some paints. So they did. And that's how he started. Hmm. Interesting. So those of you who might be recovering from an operation or weren't feeling too well, remember, you can paint. You can paint in bed. I've painted on aircraft. I've painted. Literally, I can't think of any way you couldn't paint. It's like no other hobby. Now, what I'm doing is putting a good dark sea in here. Do you see it? Right? And I'm telling you what I'm doing as well. I'm making sure. Now, look, I put the brush kind of flat on, and I'm going to drag it across there. I've got to be a little bit careful of this horizon now. Once I get that in, the rest is easy. Now, don't worry. If it looks too dark, you can lighten it. Look, that doesn't take very... In fact, I usually put a good, strong paint on first, and then I slowly bring it down in colour. I like the horizon itself to be quite, see, quite dark. If you feel it's too dark, be my guest, let it dry, or give it a dry with a hairdryer, and then bash it in. Any colour you like. Change it. You can always change your colours in acrylic. It's not like many other mediums where once you've done it, it's too late. Well, it's not too late. It's never too late. I don't think there's any medium you can't do something with. There's a belief that you can't. Oh, you've ruined it, you know. Now, look, I'm coming down. Now, once I get down there, I'm putting in the whole broad mass. And as, believe it or not, as the, as the water gets nearer to you, the sea gets nearer, it gets lighter in colour. So I'm doing that. Because I can do this whole thing down here, and then I can dry the whole lot in one. Go save electricity. Do it all together, yeah. Look at that now. Now, we can add in some other colours in a minute, but at the moment, I'm just trying to... I'm kind of scumbling in all the colour here I need. Look, down to where the sea meets the land, the rocks and the... Now, let's line that. Remember what I told you about right across? Because if you have lines in your sea that appear to be going that way, it will make the sea look like it's going uphill or down dale, as they say. And I have yet to see anybody water skiing on the ocean without a boat because there's no hills on it. Did you know that? Look at that, straight across there. That's better now. It was a bit dark. And of course, water, water colours lighten and acrylics darken. Did you know that? Take your time with this bit here because you get that right, the rest follows on now. Look at that. I'm very happy with that now. Yes, that's good, isn't it? You pleased with that? Right, brush in there. Quick look back to see what we're going to do. And the next thing is that big landmass there on the right hand side. Let's get at that. Before I do, the old hairdryer, give it a bit of a blast. And away we go. There we are. We give it a good old dry now. I must tell you something uh, which may interest you Nobel Prize. Two American doctors, not so many years ago. 20 years ago, won the Nobel Prize for medicine. And do you know what they discovered? I'm having a quick look at the painting now and I'm talking to you. I need some more paint, yellow. They discovered that we had two sides to our brain, a left and a right side. Do you know that? They got the Nobel Prize for it, so it must be true. Anyway, they found also that the people who were left-handed, as I am, and I, believe it or not, uh, so are 70% of artists. I didn't know that until I started to look into this thing. Uh, they found that those people, now I'm coming down here, look, follow on the line approximately of this cliff. And it's a mixture of yellow, blue, some of the raw sienna, and some of the burnt umber. Now I'm using the darker colour, I'll get down a bit here, because it's near the sea, you see? Anyway, they found out that the people who were left-handed used the right-hand side of their brain, and vice versa. So what I'm doing now is I'm filling up, 
the right hand side is the artistic side, the creative side, the happy side. Yeah. Can't use that side and, and be unhappy. So I'm going to fill that up for you, the right hand side. You're going to have full right hand side of your brain. You'll be smiling and laughing and enjoying yourself and everything else. Great. Now, look at that. I'm tapping in some just, this is just yellow by itself and it's mixing with the other paint. Do you see it? So, because the top of this little jetty, if you like, of land, and if you look to the picture again, you see the right hand side, it's green at the top, and as it comes down towards the ocean, of course, it gets darker. Now, back to some burnt umber and raw sienna again, mixing the two, and then we're going to level this out here. See it? Comes down about there. Now, you have the advantage, of course, with acrylic that you can either go dark light or light dark. It doesn't matter. You can add in the highlights or you can add in the dark spots. Makes no difference which you do. There's no rule. It's up to you. I'm putting in enough dark and everything else there. Now, that's one side of it. Now, let's look at the other side, which is the left-hand side of the picture again. Quickly, and you see, yes, we have some more little rocks and things there, don't we? And they start... We just pick a point. If you run across from the point, say, yeah, they start a bit below it. So let's do that, a bit below it. It's easy, isn't it? You're probably saying, I can do that, you know. If that fellow can do it, so can I. <laughs> You're dead right, actually. <laughs> there is no such thing as a person who can't paint. No, 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 no. Anyway. There we go. Now we're slowly... See, but, but all the time we're keeping this line here, the bottom of it, if you like, parallel with the horizon line. Because if it didn't, you'd look like, the, if you did something like that and put a rock on top of it, it looks, it looks like it's going, sticking into the sea or something. It looks silly. So you can't do that. So we'll cover that up. See, I told you you can't make a mistake with acrylic, didn't I? No, just a little bit. In. I don't want oh, green. I don't want green. Not green on the beach. No, no. I'm going to get some lighter colour in here in a minute because we're getting down to the sandy part of all this. And there's another big rock there. Are you enjoying this? This is great fun, actually, because you can put your own rocks. If you don't like where the rocks are, put your own in. Do you know what I mean by that? The thing is unbalanced. Put your own in. Never be afraid to do that. Many a good picture is ruined because, it, because you, you reproduce the bad the bad factors in the, in the landscape. You've got a telegraph pole or something sticking up. What do you do? You copy it, and then you ruin the whole thing. Don't put it in. Take it out. Paintbrush is stronger than bulldozer. Did you know that? Yes. You can move a mountain. It doesn't suit you. And somebody once was telling me that, you know, oh, they're not exactly. I said, no, absolutely not. It's not an architectural drawing I'm doing. It's a painting. Now, I need to put in... Put that brush away for the moment. We're going to get a bigger brush now and let's get at it because we need to put in some of the sand here. So let's do that and then we give it a wee dry. So we need white, just white and raw sienna. There's a nice yellowy colour on the beach. See it? That's yes, the fella. Nice and uh, the sand. And the sand. The sand actually goes out under the water. You know, it's not only the water kind of, at times you see the sand through it. Did you ever notice that? Yes, for all of you now who are doing... If I get a bit ahead of you, you know, if I, if you say, I can't stop and wait for you, unfortunately. I'd love to spend hours with you, but I can't do that. So what you're just going to have to do is do the broad masses, put in the bits, the important bits, and then you can do the foostering later. Now, that's an Irish word, foostering. He's foostering around with the paints now. You know what that means? Putting in all the little nice bits, the little finishing touches. You can put them in any time. So my advice to you is broad outline, and then, when I'm gone, you can finish it off. But finish it. Don't leave it up in the attic. For, and I know so many people who start a picture and they never finish them. Never. They've all these things half finished. Now I think we're coming on pretty well here now. Let's put the brush back, give us a little dry, because we need to put in some more colours in this thing. Get the old hair dryer again. Now I, think we, now I think we've got it pretty well. So our next move now is the whole thing looks lovely, but it's awful flat looking, isn't it? If you look at the other pictures, see how nice and lively it is and how awful dead this is. So let's start the livening up process. Let's get the medium-sized brush so we can do it. Now give it a good swish in the water. Incidentally, a good trick is leave your brushes in the water. I know they say, oh, it'll damage them. No, it won't. 
I've got brushes in the water for months. You might get some of the, just uh, the flake off here at the handle, but that's no harm. But I tell you what it means. If you, if you don't do that, I'm now looking, I'm pushing in some nice, nice waves. And it's up around the rocks there, just dabbling. Now this is just, fill the brush well, the point of, this is the filbert. Just fill the point of it fairly well. And then just look, let it run, let it run on like that. It kind of drag it across the, the paper. And you see where the, all these lovely little waves are all hammering up on the shore and you know, ripples and everything else. You see? But again, they've got to be straight. You've got to be parallel with the horizon line. Otherwise, I don't know what kind of waves you'd end up with. See that now? That's beginning to come to life now, isn't it? Something a bit wonky out here, isn't it? We do a little something. Maybe that's a bit much. If it's a bit much, we can always deal with them later. Because now what you're doing is you're putting in the waves where you want them. You don't have to follow every wave. Broad masses and the rest is up to you. How oh, are we getting on? Oh, this is nice now, isn't it? Yes, sir. Now, this is by the way the picture's coming to life, isn't it? All righty. Now, that's another little swish around. Let's get another brush here while that one is soaking. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of green into that. Green, he says? Where are you going to put that? In the water. Just a little taste of it here and there. Just little reflections. Maybe a bit, a bit bluer. The, kind of a bluey green. The waters around Ireland have this lovely kind of bluey green look about them. And it breaks up the thing. You see that? Not too much of it now. And the same thing there a bit. Now, I'm saving me little boats and things to last, because they're the little fun bits, you know, the little finishers. Don't put them in till the very end, till you're ready to do it, because I think it, it spoils the picture if, you're, if you've got one half of it finished and the other half not. Good fun, too. Now, more brown and a little bit of the raw sienna, because we've got some more rocks to go in here. Yeah, big rock there. Rock, rock, rock. Uh, you, have, you can have your own music playing. Remember I told you that about the music. Use the music. Enjoy it. Yes, I have a... I find I've often sat here in this studio till 3 o'clock in the morning. I didn't even know it was that time. You look at the clock and you realise, my goodness me, look at the time I've spent out here. It's true. Peggy forgets them there. Maybe if she's glad to forget them there, she's... Now I'm putting in just highlights. Now I'm beginning to pick which way is the light coming. Well, I think, I think in this case, the light's coming this way a bit. So I'm putting in a little, just little touches here and there. Don't go mad with this now. It's not a... I hate too much highlights. At the same time, some of them are, some of them are nice. Now that might be slightly the wrong color. So we'll add in a little bit. Ah, that's better, isn't it? Yeah. I haven't used the vermilion at all, didn't? Hmm, uh, don't need it. So in actual fact, we've painted this picture with one, two, three, four colors. Isn't that quite amazing? Yes, you wouldn't think it. Yeah, that maybe a little green there might be the thing. I think that's what's in the other picture. Yeah, that's better, isn't it? Just a little light there. Okay, now I'm gonna start now looking at the little boats. Now this time I'm using the white for the boats and off comes the top of my flow improver. I rather like this stuff. Let me a little brush. Dip the brush into it, look. Then into the white. Take off plenty, get a good lump of white out there. Don't be afraid of it. You've got plenty. Look, I've got gallons of it there. Wasteful, I'm going to this time, yes. Now, I'm going to now just start off. Look, I'm going to put in some of these boats. Now, the near ones, the near sails, you know what I mean by that, are bigger. And they must also come down the sea further. Do you understand that? You can't have the nearest ones with big sails further away. Another, another couple there. Look, another one there. Now, you put few little, they're all over the place, these Ooh, little tiny ones. There's one nearly over in the Mullican Tower. Now, we're getting to the end of this thing now, aren't we? I think we put a little bottom on this boat. Well, that's some bottom, isn't it? It just ran down the, pa the page, of the canvas, maybe because it was too wet. Now, what are we next? A birdie, a birdie. We did a good bit of drying this time, didn't we? So we can take our time to finish this off, because we've got a little thing to tell you. Unfortunately, you know, this is the last in the series. Isn't that very sad? Well, I'm very sad it is anyway. So I hope you enjoyed these little paintings. I certainly hope that you're doing them and that you're telling a friend. You know, be a friend, tell a friend. Because it's a wonderful hobby. Try it once if you don't like it. Well, I don't know anybody who doesn't. We just think we can't do it. I'm just tearing the, look, just tearing off the tape 
to create our little frame around this. If, uh, and there's always one that doesn't come off so easy. Do you see that? It's Murphy's Law. You know Murphy's Law? Murphy's Law states, if it can go wrong, it will. And there we are. Now, don't let it swish down the... And there we go. So from Frank Clark, until we meet again, remember, you try this out and have some more fun. <laughs>